So, hello there, and welcome back to yet another Night of the Movies podcast. And in these podcasts, I talk all things movies and TV, and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I'm viewing Cobweb, this new horror film, which is most likely still in cinemas, although I'm not certain on that. But it was just in cinemas anyway. But just before I do that, I should say what I say to have any podcast I do, which is if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, hello there to my viewers, but you prefer to listen to your podcasts, well, guess what? You can with this one too at Nights and Movies on Spotify. And if you are already listening to this podcast on Spotify, and do there to podcast listeners, then you can also check this podcast out visually on my YouTube channel at Nights and Movies on that platform as well. Likewise, where if you may be watching or listening to the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the podcast, of course. And leave me some feedback on things to improve on with future podcasts, because there's always things to improve on and feedback is as ever much appreciated also and you might have already heard to sound an interference already apologies if there is any further sound interference during this podcast because i'm recording this in my bedroom in my house and right next door is my neighbor and they're having their kitchen done so if you hear any loud banging during this podcast then it's just, it's out of my control. It's just because they're having their kitchen done, and I do apologise about that. But other than that, this should be a great and fun podcast to listen to and or watch. So, let's get into it. Cobweb. So, this film is directed by Samuel Bowden, and it stars Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr. Two, you know, not huge names, but Lizzie Kaplan has been in a fair amount of stuff. You know, I always remember her from the first Cloverfield film. I thought she was great in that. And I also, I liked her in Now You See Me Too. Now You See Me Too was not a good film, but she was one of the best parts of that film. In fact, she was probably the best part. And Anthony Starr, if we don't know him by name, he plays Homelander in the TV show The Boys, which is one of the best TV shows on TV right now. It's currently streaming on Prime Video. The fourth series of that show is coming sometime later this year. He plays Homelander so well. He's so menacing and so scary. And yeah, he is terrific in that show. And so you got them two in there, and they were a big drawing force with me and this film. They were big yeah, they were a big draw for me and this film. But also I had the chance to see the trailer for this film when I went to go and watch Talk to Me, the A24 Home movie that's by YouTubers, which is just Phenomenal, by the way, one of the best films of the year and one of the best horror movies of the past couple of years. When I went to go and see that a couple of months ago now, at least it feels like a couple of months ago, um, I remember watching the trailer for Cobweb and I was like, ooh, that looks spooky, that looked a bit scary. I wonder why it's not releasing at Halloween, <laughs> but, you know, that looks good. That looks like a good film. I want to go and watch it. So you had... The, you had the cast and you had the trailer and you had the trailer which interested me and even though the film's been getting negative reviews, I mean it's not been getting overly negative reviews but even so it has been getting you know a mixed reception to say the least I was still wanting to see it. So, yesterday, a couple of days after after it came out, in fact, it's about a week after it came out now, I decided to go and watch this film to see if it was any good, to see if people were wrong about it if, if, and, and if it was actually very underrated, if it was going to be really, really good, or to see if it was as bad as people were saying. And the film follows the story of this young boy called Peter, who is possessed by this voice he keeps hearing within his bedroom walls. And Peter's parents, played by Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr, keep attempting to convince this young boy that it's all in his imagination. And yet, as the film progresses, it everything begins to be revealed, and you realise that Peter's parents are hiding something. And that's basically the plot of Cobweb. And honestly, I thought this film was okay. You know what? 
it wasn't too bad. I enjoyed myself watching this in the cinema. Now, is it great? No. And did it scare me? Not really. There's a couple of jump scares which worked me in the film. However, I must admit, I think jump scares in horror movies are a bit, are a bit cheap. Because, yeah, they elicit an emotion for like, what, 30 seconds at the most. But I think the best horror movies make you feel really unnerved and get under your skin and are quite terrifying to watch from beginning to end. So, you know, there's a couple of jump scares in the film and I admit they did work. But I also thought they were a bit cheap. And there are some moments which make you scratch your head like what and i'm not sure if the third and final act of the film worked but saying all that i thought it was a spooky film i liked the atmosphere that the film gave off i liked how it built up tension and i thought a lot of the film was saved by the two main supporting performances like there's a lot of characters in the film there's a lot of other actors but for me the two most noteworthy actors in this film and I've already mentioned a couple of times in this podcast are Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr particularly Anthony Starr in this film every single time he's on screen he is demanding the screen he is menacing you're like oh I don't want to mess with him you get some Homelander vibes off him which isn't always the best because he might be getting typecast but still I really, really liked Anthony Starr in the film, and Lizzie Kaplan was great, showing her range. I haven't seen her do a role like this before, and yeah, those were the parts of the film which really, really worked for me. Whenever the day once, whenever they were on screen, I was, I was scared for their kid. Because Peter, you know, the kid that you follow in the film, he doesn't really like his parents, and you can see why. And Listen, I I got into all that stuff. I was I was invested in Peter Stormer and how he was trying to get away from his parents as the film goes on. That's not really a spoiler. You just that's something that happens as the film goes on. And you know I was invested in that because I found Peter's parents, played by Anthony Starr and Lizzie Kaplan, to be quite unnerving in the film. And also, my experience watching this film, my cinematic experience, what my cinema experience, should I say, watching this film was enhanced by the fact a insect or spider, or is a spider an insect? I'm not even sure, but by the fact that an insect or fly was crawling about on the projector whilst the film was playing in the cinema. And <laughs> the thing is, if you can't tell already, I'm sweating buckets because it's quite hot where I am right now. We're having a bit of a small heat wave. And <laughs> I went to the cinema, it was absolutely boiling and clearly the projector door had been left open. And, oh my God, I can just hear some wee loud bow- banging and it's really distracting me. Anyway, yeah, clearly the, project- clearly the door to the projector room where the film was being projected from had been left open and an insect had got in. It was crawling all around the projector and at first for the first about 20 minutes of the film i thought it was a creative decision to have this insect shadow crawling about in the background and i'm still not totally sure that it wasn't i'm really not sure that it wasn't but it actually enhanced my experience of the film like i don't think it was actually a creative decision by the filmmakers of this film i think it was just because an insect was crawling about on the projector but whenever that happened in the film i was like okay this is actually enhancing my experience and it actually made the film more enjoyable and at the same time it's about 90 minutes long and it flew by and I never felt bored in the film I never felt too unengaged and yeah I had a good time watching it I will say there are some big problems and looking back on it the scariest moments in the film are wasted (laughs) what Yeah, it feels like all the potential that the film had to really um, hit the nail on the head and stick the landing in its final act was all wasted for the most part. And I won't go into too much details, but the best parts of the film were really there in the last half an hour. And, you know, I've already spoken about what I think the best parts of the film are. So, yeah, they were... It was... It was like they were doing everything right up until the final act where it all became a bit clunky. There were some good parts of the final act and, you know, I'm not going to say it's an awful final act, but it becomes a bit clunky and a bit silly and 
yeah, I started to not care about what was really going on. And I didn't think the um, the main child actor was great in the film. I, I thought he was... I thought that Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr, who are in a lot of scenes with the young kid who plays Peter, elevated his performance. But at the same time, I don't think he was great. I didn't buy into him too much. And I didn't really care too much about some of the subplots. Like, there's all these sub, uh, there's this whole subplot with the kid, you know, the main kid that he followed being bullied at school. Didn't really care about that too much. And I didn't think the score was particularly memorable, particularly for a horror score. It just felt like I already heard this musical score for another horror movie in the past. And the filmmaking isn't too special. Like, I must admit, I'm not a huge horror movie fan, and I've spoken about this on the channel in the past. And so I can imagine somebody who's a horror aficionado, someone who's not like me and who's seen a lot of horror movies, watching this and going, that feels very generic. I, they're just copying that from another horror movie. But I didn't have that, so maybe that's why I enjoyed the film a bit more, because I haven't seen a lot of horror movies. But you can still clearly see where the film is taking a lot of inspiration from things like Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, you know. You can still clearly see where the film is taking a lot of inspiration. And sometimes it just... It feels like it's on the verge of doing something great, but it never quite gets it. Never, it never quite gets to being that great horror movie that, to me, the trailer gave off it could be. And that's not to say it's bad, though. I honestly don't understand the mixed reception it got. I really don't. I think there's a lot in this film to admire. And you know what? It's a great horror movie to watch at Halloween. But we're in September. Why the hell is this film not released at Halloween? I had the same issue with Haunted Mansion, which came out in August. Like, I didn't think Haunted Mansion was that good. And it also wasn't that scary. It wasn't that funny. It was meant to be this whole comedy. And it just, it was, yeah, it really wasn't any good, really. But the thing is, though, regardless whether Disney believed in it or not, they could have released it at Halloween and made some money off it. And that's what the production company behind this film, behind Cobweb, could have done. I don't know what production company it is. I've got a feeling it's Lionsgate, but I'm not totally sure. You know, they could have released this film at Halloween. And regardless, regardless if, it had, if they had faith in it, they still could have made some money off of it. Push it back a bit more, you know, as far as I know, apart from that new Exorcist film, which looks absolute pants, by the way, there were no horror movies coming out around Halloween. And I might be wrong there, because I'm not a big horror aficionado, so maybe I'm speaking out of my depth. But the point I'm making is, why didn't this film release at Halloween? Because the film literally says in its opening... That is taking place, the film is set one week before Halloween. It's set on the week leading up to Halloween. So when you release it, the first week of September. I mean, that's when it released in the UK. As far as I'm aware, it's not even released in the US. I, you know, I just, I, I don't understand why this film didn't come out at Halloween. Sorry, I went on a bit of a rant there, but I was watching, I was thinking, you know what, I can imagine a lot of people in the cinema really enjoying this, and, you know, uh, screaming at the jump scares, and uh, screaming at some of the horror later on in the film as it builds up to the final act, but there was, apart from me, two other people in my cinema, there was three people in my cinema overall, that's me included, and I, I felt it was wasted when I walked out the cinema, and... It was, there was bright sun, I was like, this should have come out of Halloween, the film is set at Halloween, there are segments of the film which are dedicated to the festivity of Halloween, I mean, I don't really celebrate myself, but the point of making this, if this film came out of Halloween, more people talk about it, more people would have gone and watched it, and you know what, I bet it would have been better received, maybe not actually, but still, the point I'm making is, I think if this film came out Halloween, it just would have been so much better. <laughs> you know, I would have been far more excited to see this at Halloween than the new Exorcist film. And I'm not saying anything bad about the Exorcist franchise. I actually quite liked the first Exorcist film. I've only seen it once, but I quite enjoyed it. Um, but <sighs> the trailer for the new Exorcist looked pants. And the trailer for this looked really good. At least it did to me. And I feel that not releasing this at Halloween was a huge missed opportunity. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to go on a tangent there because it seems to be happening with a lot of horror movies recently. You know, The Nun 2, which is coming out at the end of this month. 
why is it coming out at the end of this month? <laughs> why is it not coming out in October? I mean, it might be coming out of October, but I saw a trailer for it in the cinema yesterday, and I'm pretty sure it said end of this month, Haunting in Venice, which is a new Kenneth Branagh Hercules Poor film, which looks like it's more focused on horror than the other Kenneth Branagh Hercules Poor films. You know, that looks like it's going to be quite scary. Guess when it's releasing? In two weeks! Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I just it really annoys me when they're this close to Halloween and they were not and they're not releasing these films at Halloween. There, there might be a good reason for it, but I just don't get it. Like, why didn't Haunted Mansion release at Halloween? Why didn't this film release at Halloween? And why is Haunting in Venice and the Nun Two not releasing around Halloween? I just don't get it. But anyway, going back on the film, one of the things I want to mention is one of the things I want to mention is that Seth Rogen, which you know many people might know from his, um, many people might know from such comedies as um, This Is the End, Neighbours, and various other things. Just can't think of them off the top of my head because I'm sweating buckets. But Seth Rogen is producer on this film, and um, the last film he was producer on was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, which is a really fun film, but it's a bit of a leap from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem to Cobweb, you know. Not only in the ne not only in the length of the names, but also in the content of both films. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that I found it funny that uh, Seth Rogen is producing. You know, he produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and now this, but he's also a producer on uh, the Boys TV show, which must be why Anthony Styles in the film must be one of the reasons. And he's worked with Lizzie Kaplan for on the film The Interview. So you know that's why those two are in there. And again, Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Styles are the best part of the film. And you know, overall the film isn't bad. I didn't mind watching it. And if you want a good spooky fun whole movie to watch in the cinema, I would recommend this. It's not going to blow you away. It's not one of the best horror films of recent memory. And it is nothing. And I mean nothing compared to Talk to Me. Talk to Me is one of the best horror movies. I. I might have seen ever, and granted I haven't seen a lot of horror films, but, you know, I've seen a fair amount still, and Talk To Me really blew me away. This one didn't, but I still had a good time with it, and you know what? It was worth watch. I don't care what one says. I had an enjoyable time in this film. Falls apart, I've been its third act, and it gets a bit silly. And one other thing, um, the film, the film's big reveal is spoiled on the poster. What's that all about? Like, I'm not even sure if it's the main poster of the film, but still, I when I was booking this on the Odeon app, when I was booking my ticket on the Odeon app, I was like, oh, I haven't seen that poster for this film. And then I realised halfway through, oh, Christ, they ruined the big reveal for this film in the poster. Anyway, um, yeah, I didn't mind the film. I thought it was okay. It was a spooky horror flick, which was elevated by its supporting performances, particularly Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that Cobweb, I'm going to say it's a 6.5 out of 10. Again, not anything brilliant, which is why I haven't given it, you know, a 7.5 out of 10 or higher. And I wouldn't say it's a particularly solid film either, which is why I haven't given it a 7 out of 10. But you know what? I enjoyed myself. And I, I, I had a good time with this film. I never felt bored. And I can tell you now, I've watched films which are 90 minutes in the cinema on streaming and I have felt bored. And I felt bored watching Haunted Mansion. I thought that film had a little bit of merit, but I did feel bored watching it. And even so, Haunted, Man Haunted Mansion wasn't a straight up horror film like this is. It's so I'm comparing it because that's the last sort of horror film I watched um, in the cinema. And I did feel bored watching that, but I didn't feel bored watching this, so I didn't feel tedious. A part of Haunted Mansion which felt tedious. There are parts of this film which didn't. There are no parts of this film which I got bored by. It's a bit clunky and it's not great. And again, not going to blow you away. But it's a spooky fun horror flick. Should have come out of Halloween. Should have come out of Halloween. But, you know, um, it's okay. I I really didn't mind it. <laughs> I actually, I actually liked 
more of the film than I thought I was going to. Especially when I heard the mixed reception. I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this film. And you know what? I ended up enjoying it more than I expected. And so all in all, as I already said, Cobweb is a spooky, fun horror flick, which is elevated by its important performances. And that is why I'm going to give Cobweb a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's podcast. I don't know how much this podcast has made sense because I'm recording this on a very warm day right now. I'm boiling in this bedroom. And if you can't tell already, I'm sweating buckets. And when I sweat buckets, I don't always make the best sense. I don't always think straight. So I do apologise if this podcast hasn't made sense in certain parts. But still, if you have seen Cold Web, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below because I'd love to hear what some people thought of the film. Maybe you loved it. Maybe you thought it was one of the best horror movies you've seen in recent uh, recent years, or maybe you absolutely hated it. And if you did, uh, let me know why in the comment section below. And if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like subscribe on this podcast. And look forward to many more podcasts coming very soon on this channel. Thank you as always for watching or listening, and I will see you guys again soon. But bye for now. Bye.